Elvis Presley loved his cars, especially those big, flashy Cadillacs. For the king of rock and roll, they practically sang the word success. But even dazzling caddy colors were too dull for the king. Elvis wanted his own paint job, a flamboyant signature statement for a guy who wasn't afraid of the garish. How about a great colored Cadillac? In high school, Elvis drove a beat up old Lincoln. After graduation, Presley worked as a truck driver, which gave him the chance to scout out cars. A Cadillac always topped his list. He would see these nice cars passing, and that would kind of get him daydreaming. And he would start to think, man, if I ever make it, you know, I want to buy one of those. And he did. In 1955, after his first big record contract, he bought a pink one for his mother, who didn't drive. By 1956, the budding king of rock and roll wanted his own. Hound Dog, Don't Be Cruel, Love Me Tender. 1956 was a banner year for Elvis Presley. This is when it was all uh, just getting ready to break loose. Uh, Heartbreak Hotel had been released, uh, it was doing very well. It was going to become his first gold single. And uh, so he was really getting to that point where he was going to become an international star. In 1956, while in Houston for a concert, Elvis spotted the car he wanted, the new Biarritz model of the Cadillac El Dorado and a convertible to boot. If you could afford it, a Cadillac convertible cost more than $7,000, three times the price of a convertible Chevy. A budding rock star could spend that in a heartbeat. But the Houston car salesman didn't recognize Elvis. When Presley asked to test drive the car, the salesman gave him the once over. Seeing a kid with casual clothes and long sideburns, he told Elvis that no one test drove the Caddy. When Presley plunked down $7,500 cash and demanded that the commission go to the guy outside washing Cadillacs, he got the salesman's undivided attention. And he got the car, loaded with the Continental kit, which included air conditioning, power windows, power brakes, power steering, and a top flight radio with automatic antenna. A critical need so the king could hear all his hits. Presley, wind blowing through his pompadour, drove the gleaming machine nearly 700 miles from Houston back home to Memphis, gunning the 360 cubic inch V8 engine. At night, he could use the caddy's Autronic Eye, a space age gadget that sat on the dash, detected oncoming cars, and automatically dimmed the headlights. The crooner in his Cadillac became an item. He drove it everywhere, including, legend has it, in games of chicken with fellow rocker and Cadillac lover, Jerry Lee Lewis. Elvis and his caddy seemed the perfect couple, except for the color. White just didn't have enough pizzazz for Elvis the pelvis. A paint job was clearly in order. In July 1957, the king took his stylish carriage down to Jimmy Sanders, who ran a custom auto shop in Memphis. To demonstrate just what shade he wanted the car, legend has it that Elvis grabbed a bunch of grapes, smashed them on the hood, and said, that's the color I want. You know, I think the reason that he wanted purple is just because it was a little different. I wanted something that kind of stood out a little bit and made a statement. The great caddy now stuck out in a crowd. But Elvis had roving eyes. He was always buying new Cadillacs, not only for himself, but also for friends and family. Elvis Presley was a sophisticated Cadillac buyer. Uh, uh, he was known to buy upwards of 400 Cadillacs uh, in his lifetime. He was also a person that, uh, if he liked you, would give you a car. But he didn't have the 56 purple Cadillac long. By December 1957, the fickle crooner traded her for a newer model. I don't know if Elvis ever had a favorite car. You know, he would drive one for a while, and uh, then he would see something else and say, man, that, now that's a cool car. But this caddy wasn't going to rot on a used car lot. Lena Moskowitz, a friend of Presley's mother and a big Elvis fan, knew Elvis was trading it in, and she wanted it. Elvis arranged for her to get it from the dealer just as soon as he traded it. She paid $4,893, and Presley even signed the back of the title, this car formerly owned by Elvis Presley. Lena and Glenn brought it back to Graceland to visit with Elvis's mother. The car was often mobbed at the gate by fans that just wanted to touch it. Over time, the caddy was taken out less and less. As the owner aged, the old beauty was moved to an open field and left to rot. Like Elvis himself, the once proud vehicle languished. Its great purple coating slowly began to oxidize. Vandals took their turns as well. By 1976, the car was a mess. 
its interior virtually destroyed by the elements. It was auctioned off to a used car dealer named James Cantrell for $975. Cantrell knew this was the king's old carriage, and he had a plan. He would restore the car and then present it to Presley as a surprise. He gave the car a celebrity makeover to the tune of $28,000. The body was primed, painted, and buffed. The interior reupholstered, busted taillights and mirrors replaced. By August 1977, the car was nearing completion. Unfortunately, Elvis Presley would not live to see it. He died from a drug overdose on August 9th. He was 42. Elvis has never yet been replaced as the king of rock and roll, with his records selling briskly even today. He has become a pop icon, remembered in velvet wall hangings, occasional reports of live sightings, and in pilgrimages to Graceland. If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, Presley must be considered among the most revered pop figures of the century. His impact on American culture is undeniable. So too is that of the Cadillac, an enduring symbol of status. In 1990, the Cantrell family permanently loaned the purple Cadillac to the Presley estate. The Cantrells have had numerous offers for the car, some close to a million dollars, but have accepted none. Elvis Presley's purple Cadillac can be seen at the Car Museum on the Graceland Estate in Memphis, Tennessee.